Howdy folks. How are you all doing? I have my tea. I'm ready to kick on Wednesday. Wednesday evening. That is assuming I can stay awake. Oh, crikey. Excuse me while I take it while my tea and some caffeine. <sighs> Crikey, my keyboard's dusty. Great brush for this. Hope they won't punch any of the wrong keys. Incredibly dusty. <sighs> this is going to need a clean this weekend, this lot. So how is everyone doing? Hope you've had a good week so far. Uh, I seem to be fairly knackered this week for some reason. Um, wow, well, this is really dusty. Crikey. Oh, I need to change the title on this. I always forget. Uh, hmm. Wonder if that will update. Oh, so what do we have on the news? Um, uh, just a couple of short things on the community side. Um, let me just switch to the browser view. Oh, so that up. So first off, I noticed that um, Ed from the forum, um, <laughs> he's just tweeted, I tried to finish some projects off with the RC20 14 to FPGA ice core converter board that he st started ages and ages ago, years ago, in fact. Um, so he's continuing on with that. Uh, if you don't know what the uh, RC 2014 is, it's uh, it's like a build your own DIY Z80 computer that has these modular cards, it's really cool, and you build them yourself. And then they all slot into this kind of backplane. Very simple backplane. Uh, Spencer. Spencer's projects. And you can you can find him on, on Twitter actually. Um, hold on. Uh, he's just it's RC two oh one four or at ZX Spect Rom. Um, And you can find Ed Brunley, um, he, he's done a lot of gaming stuff actually as well, and lots of retro stuff, 
um, with the black eyes, which is kind of cool. Should put a link in to that as well. Don't do that. Put his stuff up. So it's quite amusing that he's going back to that and get that working. He has to put some level shifters on that as well to make it work. Um, I'm not going to watch that video, not on my stream. It was very funny. Has anyone seen it? I'm not going to turn the sound on because of what it says. I was in hysterics when I saw that. Uh, sorry, now I'm going to have to play it. Uh, hi, yeah, Laurie. This is one of my favourite little tweets that I saw. Kids, eh? Who could have them? <laughs> right, we're slightly off topic again. Missed the beginning. I don't think you missed much, Laurie. Uh, I was just talking about Ed. Um, I was just going through community stuff. And I, I mentioned that Ed was um, had decided to finish off a project that he started a couple of years ago. Integrating the um, the ice core onto the RC twenty fourteen. And I just came from my street, saw that uh, Twitter about the goat, the kid talking about the goat. <laughs> um, what else has been going on? Oh, I post Schuben. Um who may well join us later. He's in Florida, so he's normally working at this point. Um, uh, let me give you his Twitter because um, he's just started doing a series of videos about um, uh, using FPGA, and he's obviously he's using two things. He's using the uh, tiny FPGA. He's also using the Black Ice uh, MX. Um, I'll give you his. Um, give you Twitter. And also, this is the YouTube stuff that he started doing, and I, I do recommend it, it's very good. He's got a very good video presence, actually. So, do check that out. <laughs> Uh, and he's building um, processor in Verilog. He's going through the tools and things. Uh, I think it's RISC five actually. Very interesting. What else do we have? This was really interesting. Oh yeah, so um, Gatecat said uh, next PNR is according to Git three years old. That was. Uh, three days ago, Monday, Sunday, um, which is interesting. But the other thing that was really quite cool is this one. I don't know if you saw this uh, tweet. Um, I remember talking to do, um, Gatecat about this ages ago and he, he seemed to think that it was possible to do partial reconfiguration on the ECP5. What is that? That That's basically the ability to change or update only part of the internals um, to do a partial image update on the ECP5. So rather than rebuilding the whole thing and reloading the whole thing, you keep some things the same and you can just update parts of that. 
I remember talking to um, Gatecat about that some time ago, about how cool it would be to have that feature. And he, he looked into it and he said that he, he'd seen some stuff that made him think that it's possible. And here he is actually just doing that dynamically. But as he also points out, it's very, very early days on this. It, the, the, the thing he's doing right now is very basic. But actually, it's quite close to what I uh, would like to be able to do on um, on the new boards um, when the new software is running and stuff. But I mean, I haven't uh, had a chance to sit down and talk to get cat in a, in a long time. And I do need to catch up at some point, and I will do. But we need to revisit that. But it's very, very cool and very, very good news. Um, that was all the um, newsy bits that I wanted to cover. Oh, there was a forum thing, wasn't there? Was there something on the forum? I have to come back to that. Someone's having a PP Linux is having a bit of a problem getting configured with APIO. Come back now to that in a minute. You saw that, Laurie, as well. I see you've responded here. Um. Yeah, this is something else here. What was I going to do? No. I blanked. I cannot remember that. Right, so I'm going to move on now. Oh, um, anyone else got any news before I move on to the... Um to the stuff that we're working with. Yeah, there's some things that we need to talk about, as well as I've got some CAD stuff to do as well. And I need to give you an update on where we are with that. Um, anything that anyone needs to share, news-wise or anything? Oh, I know uh, Laurie's been very busy working on the examples. I know he's also been working on some flash, extended flash support, enabling us to write to the flash over the UART and stuff. Yeah, I'll have to have a look at the um, APIO stuff. It's ages since I've run it, Laurie. You could be right. I think Laurie's saying that the APIO um, may have changed some of its arguments with ECP5. Um, that's to do with the forum thread that I just um, went over briefly. So, yeah, as I was saying earlier, I'm also a bit knackered today. I see how well I hold up. Uh, hopefully, I once I get to a CAD, I'll wake up a bit more. Nelly um, nodded off prior to this after having some drink. Uh, I had my second jab today. Um, no real side effects, just a bit tired really more than anything and a achy arm. But brilliant. I am double protected, so to speak. So no news. Um, let's get on with some CAD. Uh, CAD layout. Browser. Uh, which order? Oh, what are we going to say? Before we go on to the CAD, actually. Um,
bit of neck ache as well. Mm. Setting my cat up, so I thought. Oh, Laurie says, I've also just added servo driver and example, servo driver example to the Black Ice of X examples. Nice one, mate. Excellent. It's really good adding all this stuff in, all these examples. You're going to need these. Um, so, one of the things I was going to say, it was good that you're here, Laurie, because I wanted to talk about on the. Um, up and coming ECP5 product and around Black Crab software. I think the, the way that I'm going to do the programming is slightly different. Um, I want to have better control so there's more advanced options on the programming. Just wondering if I should. Is it worth me bringing the cat up? Probably not at this point. But um, I want to configure it in such a way. I mean, there will be choices available options on the um, when you purchase the boards to choose whether you want for example um, JTAG support and I think it's important to have the JTAG stuff originally I was going to take that down through the black edge connector but I've, I've changed my mind on that and I've now got connectors and stuff uh, on the board that enable it to be done directly without having to go down through the black edge connector. And I'm thinking about doing several different combinations. So the options would enable the JTAG to work not only with the ECP5, but also JTAG or SW, uh, SWD um will work with the stm32 so you'll get a much better debug experience with that as well as being able to program it normally uh, through spi but that will be done by secondary process rather than primary process because I want to be able to control both devices at once under debug conditions so it'll be like a heterogeneous debug environment so that's a bit tricky uh, but, it, but it's, it's all doable okay so one of the things that we want to be able to do is um, when it comes to dealing with a flash, the reason I want to bring this up, Laurie, is because you're working on the flash stuff. So what would be nice is I think I'll have the, the flash will be connected or some flash will be connected to the FPGA. And we may or may not be able to program that via um, the JTAC depending on how I connect it to the FPGA. Uh, I'm still investigating what is and isn't possible with that. But the other, th the thing that will definitely happen is it'll be nice to have the ability to program the flash, you know, over something like a serial link, which I know you're working on, Laurie, using gateway on the FPGA. Um, and also via, you know, SPI or quad SPI or even DDR, uh, double data rate SPI, on something like a black edge, for example. I'm sorry, on a black ice or ice core. 
so that gateway is quite important from that point of view not just so that it can be programmed from you up but also from spi as well so we need to look at how um how we can add that into the support as part of the um, um, board support um, software. And in fact, whilst I was looking at that, I also noticed, and I wasn't aware of this before, uh, that um, you, you probably know about this, Laurie, but I think the ULX3 had some JTAG over Wi-Fi support which was provided via the ESP32. Have you used that? Um, sorry, at all? I'm intrigued as to uh, how well that works or not. Hello, he says, I have not used it for debugging. Okay. Um, let me quickly then, let, oh, there's a few things that I need to do. Um, let's just switch over to the CAD. Hold on. Uh, this board, by the way, is um, uh, it's uh, the new motor tile. That I've been working on. Make that slightly bigger if I could. Um, we were discussing this earlier. Um, Laurie brought out some points about. Uh, the support you'd like to see on the um, um, for building small like robots and stuff. So, uh, oh, what's he saying? But I've used the Wi-Fi programming of Bitstreams and Flash. Okay, and I think the MicroPython commands I use for that might use jtag or quite possibly i mean what i want to do is be able to do uh, certainly the jtag stuff and maybe do jtag over bluetooth or wi-fi as well that's certainly on my list but um i might also want to be able to support um circuit python and be able to drag and drop files as well we'll come back around to that in a minute actually um, so let's just cover this board briefly. So this is a new design. I said in the week I was having real problems trying to source the right um, drivers, driver chips. It's a bit of a nightmare out there. Most of the Texas ones aren't available, obviously. TI is just none of their stuff is available because they burnt the factory down in Texas or whatever. Or set their factory alight. Um, that in turn has caused a knock-on effect on other drivers from other suppliers like the ones I was looking for which have turned those into gold dust. The price has gone up and the stock has dropped completely. Um, but I found another one that I can use here. So um, this board here is uh, a dual motor driver. But the other thing that this has built in is the um, encoder support. Um, actually, you can see the sort of motors they are. So if you look at the motors on the bottom of this, 
These are similar to the ones that uh, Laurie's been talking to me about. These are available on places like um, AliExpress, etc. So the motor, there's two motors here. But you see at the back, if you look very closely, there's actually an encoder on the back here on this PCB that measures the rotation. Rotation comes out the other end. These are geared, brushed motors. Um, so supporting the uh, uh, outputs from those. They have a, like an A and B quadrature encoded from a Hall effect um, device on the PCB. So supporting those. Now, the way that those connect is through these kind of six pin connectors. And there's kind of a standard, but there is variation from the standard as well. I, I noticed depending where you buy these damn things for. Um, but the board so far that I've designed or the tile to support these, um, I've used a six pin JST PH two mil spaced connectors here. And so you've got the motor driver signals, two motor driver signals, PWM signals. You've got a power signal, which is basically three volt, three and ground. Um, and um, and then you've got your AB signal. Um, Checking the order actually. What did I say? I did actually publish it. Oh. Um. I just saw your message on um, Discord. Yeah, so it's like plus and minus motor, ground, VCC for the Hall effect supply, and then A and B, which are the input signals from the quadrature encoded input signals from the encoder, making up the six pin type connector. So that's what this board, that's one of the boards I've been working on in the last couple of days. Um, there's nothing else on this really apart from the motor driver and some extra reservoir capacitors. Um, some electrolytics. Um, there's some signals on there that we may want to reuse. There's the uh, mix signals that we may want to expose. Um, let me know if you've got ideas for what else to use those for on this board. Um, they could be used to do things like um, they could do IO controls for things like servos, for example. I could add some servo connectors on here. Add free servos, something like that, maybe. Um, Laurie says the quadrature ground and VCC are the wrong way round on my motors. Hold on, mate. Let me just check which way round they are on these ones, because again, they may not be identical. Because these things, as I say, when I was looking online. They don't always seem to be consistent. Yeah, mine goes motor plus, motor minus, uh, ground, VCC, and then A and then B. Is that different from your order? Does yours do VCC then ground first? Is that what you're saying, Roy? That's really odd. These minor variations are a nightmare. What worries me though hmm, is that this if these are just connected up and they happen to be happen to have the motors that are wired differently that it could damage the um it won't damage the motor but it might damage the hall device. I don't know if they have any protection at all what the voltage rating is or whether there's reverse voltage protection on the whole device 
Yeah, see, Laurie's saying that he, the order of his is, his motor polarities are opposite to mine. His VCC and ground for the Hall device are the opposite way around as well. Hmm. Damn, this is a real pain, isn't it? Not sure what we're going to do about that. I'm going to have to have a think. I mean, the only other possibility is I put something like screw connectors on there, but I'm, I'm trying to avoid that because that means soldering extra parts on, which is a pain. I really want surface mount connectors where I can. Then I can automate the assembly of these things. Anyhow, moving on. So let me just return quickly. So what I'm going to talk about, so that's the tile I'm working on for that, and we'll get that finished. Um, the thing I've been working on, if you remember, is the... Um, the tile board, which I still don't have a decent name for. Um, So there's some minor changes I've made to this. Um, the we've still got the same number of tiles on the outside, but this centerpiece here at the at the top, I am now using what I'm calling a super tile. So this isn't just your regular old tile slot. You can use a super tile here. Um, because you've got a lot more IOs available to you than you have on your regular tiles. Um, so let me show you what one of those super tiles might look like for our um, here. So one of the other things that was being spoken about and I've started work on this week um was you know if you did want to make that um like small robot or something there's a bunch of stuff you need to put on so this example here is one of those super tiles now on this super tile here what i've got at, at the top is the um, camera connector, the FPC version. I've also got the dip version here, but I need to come back round to this because it could be an issue. This connector here is meant to house one of those ultrasonic distance um, detection devices. I'd better show you one of those. In fact, um, I think this was the uh, this is what um, Laurie was using this kind of um, tank base for his robot. Now, what I need is. You did send me a link to this, didn't you? These sort of sensors here, let me just turn the browser back on. these things here so that's what that connector is for is to accept one of these um, the other thing you can do on a board is you could do the time of small you can buy these miniature time of flight sensors as well um, which are quite used probably more accurate than the ultrasonic ones but you could actually use those and I, I believe that uh, Laurie's been working on the example for this as well so going back to
the cat. So on the super board, you've got on the super tile, you've got the camera, and then you've got the option for that. You could also have something. I've got a little uh, gyro accelerometer or IMU device here. Uh, I'd have to change that because that's can't get hold of that damn thing at the moment. What a surprise! Um, but so I need to find a replacement for that. Uh, so that will connect over I squared C uh, because you'd need that obviously. Um, uh, the other thing that I've got here is a battery connector. We may need to upgrade that in a battery charger. Um, an LED, RGB LED possibly. And then the other thing that I've added down here is the ESPS2 um, so that we can run CircuitPython on here so that we can script it as well. And then that in turn can talk directly to the FPGA, gets wired into the FPGA as well to be able to act as a remote uh, communication device. So for the um, ice core version of the carrier, the black tile board, uh, this would fit on the top and give us all this functionality, including um, circuit Python support and Wi-Fi support, etc., etc., etc. Should be kind of cool. So we're using up all of the uh, the lines we've got left. For the uh, from the ice core over the um, black edge connector, can't see the browser. Oh, was that for the ultrasonic connector? I thought I turned it on. Hold on. Sorry, let me show you. There we go. That's what I was talking about. These are the ones that. Um, I think Laurie was using on his tank, on his robot tank, robo tank. Um, so you can either use these for positioning and detecting edges and walls and things like that, or you can use the time of flight sensors, um, the low cost optical time of flight sensors. I mean, you could use LiDAR, but that's just an entirely different story. Those are hundreds of dollars. Not only that, processing is difficult. So this board will be to house the camera, um, Wi-Fi, time of flight sensors or distance sensors if you like, plus gyro or IMU type device all on one board. And you can't put that on a normal tile, you can only put that on something like a super tile because you need more IOs. I mean the camera alone uses 12 IOs. So would that be suitable for your um, your robo tank, Laurie? Does that tick all the boxes that you need? I think the time of flight sensors I tried on the Black Ice 2 was an I squared C device. Possibly because I think they do a lot of the processing for you, basically. And like he says, yes, he thinks that covers everything. Including the camera, yeah. That way our bases are well and truly covered, I think. Uh, if we do the ECP5 Black Edge version, this super tile can have even more on it. Um, but when we get to that version of it, I mean, it uses the same carrier, 
There's a whole bunch of signals on here that will be available on the ETP5 black edge that aren't on the black ice. Um, this board here, this super tile, is really um, primarily aimed at the at mating with the ice core effectively. It's only using the signals that are available on the ice core, purposely not using the ones available on the ECP5. Because when we get to the ECP5 black edge board, um, you have things like built on camera connectors, anyhow. So you don't need all the same things. And I'll, I don't know if I'm going to have time to talk about that today, but um, that may be a next week thing. Uh, Laurie says, how do I provide battery power to motor top? Well, in this example, I've got a <clears throat> JST connector here. <clears throat> but it depends what we need to do. And that will be, that will recharge over USB. But that would only support, you know, a kind of single LiPo. Um, if we want to do something a bit more um, higher voltage, higher power, you know, like a RC lithium ion poly type thing, then um, we'd probably want to do that on a more specific um, board. If you if you're trying to charge. Uh, multiple cells you have to monitor the voltages across each of the cells and it gets more complex i'm just trying to keep it simple on this for the moment but yeah there are more complex solutions that we're going to need to cover and heavier duty ones depending on what your power requirements are obviously so you know for this one currently you can just plug it in here yeah just like you would on uh, when it's screw terminal connectors to the motor tile would be the easiest for my robot. Yeah, well, we might have to go that way anyhow, Laurie, because of this variation in the um, pinouts. The issue for me is one of construction. Every time we have to put something on the board that requires soldering, it means I've got to solder the damn things. And that is hugely time consuming. Um, and I don't always like to provide, the, you know, the boards and kind of solder yourself, although that is a possibility. So I just need to think about that. The other issue is, here's the other thing that I've been thinking about. So remember these go together like a sandwich. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you can do, I keep disappearing. What you mean I keep disappearing, or you mean that the stream keeps going down? Sorry. I did see it flash red briefly. It seems to be okay now. Is it dropping frames? Let me just have a look at the stats here. I mean, it's running okay now, but if I look at the history, it has dropped a few frames, definitely. Apologies for that. Hopefully I'm back. Uh, but yeah, sorry. So if you remember, we've got this kind of sandwich layered approach. Um, I ordered a load of these um, spacers, by the way, and I've received them this week. They came really quick, but they're the wrong size, the ones I received. So I've just ordered some more again now. They're too short. They're a bit ambiguous the way that these are described on some of the sites. But anyhow, you've got a small gap in between. Now, in some cases, so that has components on the top, right, in this sandwich. But I might want to have the components. So this top board will be upside down. Now, why might I want to do that? Right, but let's take, for example, this super board here that we're looking for, this super tile. The trouble is with this current layout, the way I've done it here is, we've got all these components, and they're all on one side, apart from the super tile connector. And it's the same for any tile. Because that's the tile connector is pointing down, connecting to the board, right? 
But the trouble is that makes this assembly double sided, which makes it even more expensive or a, a two part assembly job, which is a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, it just went to zero again. Let me just check my uh, modem. Hold on. Modem. <laughs> Those were the days. My router. I don't know, it seems to be connected okay, I don't know why, it's coming up and down a little bit. You just have to bear with me, I'm afraid. Um, uh, oh, in fact. Oh, that's better. Um, yeah, so where was I? So on on this on this super tile, for example, all the components are on one side, which is good, except the connector where it connects onto the carrier. Problem is that makes it a double-sided assembly. That means you either have to do two passes on the assembly, um, including two oven passes in some cases, and that. It's a pain. So what you sometimes might want to do is you can flip the board so that the components are on the same side. I don't know what you think, guys. Um, but if what do I do? If I mirror this, then I rotate it. So it's like that. So now when that board goes down, the components are going to be underneath the board. They're actually going to be sandwiched in between uh, the tile itself and the carrier board, which is fine as long as you don't have any high components. So I might want to reserve the right to be able to do that. But it is slightly odd. Um, it depends on the board, you see, as to whether that's a sensible thing to do. So, for example, on this super tile, you probably wouldn't want to do that because you need access to things like, well, the FPC is not so much of a problem because you can just slide the FPC cable in. But if you wanted to use the um, this connector here, than it would be so what you'd have to do is you probably have to then mirror this connector here so that you can still mount it from the top yeah so because that goes through the board so it's not a problem um, and likewise with the ultrasonic connector as well however if you look at these two there is a problem here because if I mount this uh, camera on here I can't easily mount this because the two are going to get in the way of each other if I'm not careful. But it all depends which way round they are on whether you have a cable in between, you know, your your dip connector and the dip camera or, you know, a cable from the, you know, from the ultrasonic detection board to this one. So there are issues there that have to be played around played around with but because these are through hole components these two it shouldn't be too much of an issue because you can mount them from the other side 
I just got to make sure that the connections are reversed in order to support that. Um, and then if you're using the FPC camera, that's probably not an issue because the uh, the flex cable can go under the board before it connects in. So we can probably get away with it. But in many cases, it seems sensible to do these that way around. So the components are actually on the other side of the board and they're sandwiched between the two. You have to be a bit careful. So for example, um, when I were talking about showing that motor board earlier, because you know the gap between here is about seven mil, somewhere between six and seven mil. So you have to watch the height of the components. So when I'm putting the electrolytics on, the ones that I've put on uh, to that uh, motor driver board are six by five. So they've got a diameter of six mil, but they're only five mil high. And that ensures that there's enough room if the board is reversed so that they're, those components are sitting you know, in between the tile and the carrier as part of the sandwich. Um, so in that case, if we were then to go for the screw terminals, the screw terminals would have to go into the top of the board, or sorry, what is effectively the bottom of the board. Um, so I'd need to enable that to be supported because most of the screw terminals, <clears throat> I think would be, well, there's two issues with them. Uh, these are bigger ones. I probably wouldn't need to go this big. Ah, there's that board. I was wondering where that was. That's to modify my oven. Um, so you'll be familiar with these sorts of things. I guess you've seen these. And they're screw connectors, right? That's a big juicy one. We don't need them that that big not for these smaller motors we can get away with these ones which are the next size down you can see that they're through hole now the thing is the height of these let me just measure them now actually they are I think about nine mil so they'd be too tall to fit in that sandwich but even if you could fit them in because they're screw terminals, well, focus there. If they were in the sandwich part of the board, you wouldn't be able to get the screw in. Focus, thank you. So these would have to go on the top. So these would go on the opposite side to where the rest of us rest of the uh, components are. However, because it's a through hole component, that's not a problem. It's easy to design in. But these are considerations that we have to um, take into account. Oh, I'm glad I found that board. Lost part boards. We're modifying my um, reflow oven. Adding extra thermistors in so that's um so i'll probably that's probably the way round that i'm going to have these so that the components are sandwiched between the tile or super tile and the carrier and they're low profile enough for that to work with the exception of the components that you need access to and in the case where they're through hole components those will actually come into the top so things might be slightly upside down to the way that you might expect them but it does help in terms of construction and assembly so it means you can do everything on one side that means you can do it in one pass so when you do the pick and place of the components it's all on one side all the surface mount parts including the connector because if you have the connector on the opposite side then it's a two pass and a double reflow if you like 
which just makes it, you know, makes everything take twice as long and or cost twice as much if you're paying someone else to do it, right? So what do you think about um, lorry in particular? Because you've got more experience with the um, this stuff, particularly on the UNX3. So having the ESP32 S2 on there running circuit Python, what do you think about that? I mean, I was thinking of doing a Bluetooth thing, but I'll cover that on another angle because that's further down the road and we've got to do all the software for that yet. The good thing about using the ESPS2, by the way, is we've got the circuit Python support already. Um, including all of the networking and Wi-Fi libraries. Um, so that enables us to then talk to, you know, the robot whilst it's running without having to have cables plugged into it. So the ESP32 will connect via either SPI or Quad SPI. I'd like to do both or offer both. Um, and it will have a UART connection in. It will probably be the same UART connection that the that's shared with the STM32. So it could either talk to the STM32 or the FPGA depending on how we configure it. So it has both as it has both UART and you know a flavor of SPI, preferably QSPI. But I think it's important, obviously, to have a remote connection to the device in the you know. A robotics or automation environment um, and by using circuit Python we've also got the ability to script um, easily you know um, what else have I covered Oh, and it's also got the USB here as well. So you'll be able to plug into that and that will come up as a, um, it will come up as a storage device as well as having the REPL. Um, and the storage device could also be used to send files to the flash, which is handy. So you can just drag a file onto the flash if you want to. Or have it look for those files appearing and then have it program the flash. Now it could either do that by piping it to the STM32 um, or it could actually talk to the gateway in the FPGA which then reprograms the flash itself. Uh, depending whether you want it to reprogram the FPGA live or whether you want to reprogram the flash. And then have the have the FPGA reboot effectively. So it gives us all that option, and it enables us to use you know some of the work that I was doing before with Alloy, etc. Um, and I think that way we've ticked all the major boxes. So that once we've got this board, we've got a motor board, and we've got the tile carrier. We can then put an ice core on it and we can start making this whole thing work. We can start testing these things out. Nice. So that's that so that's what super tile is um and as i say when we get to the black edge side of things then there'll be things on the super tile that are even more sophisticated you know with an ecb5 version 
because we won't need to take up the pins to use for the camera because there'll be a camera connected directly on the board. Um, I'm also looking at the possibility. Um, yes, I've wanted this since I did that mobile robot a couple of years ago. Oh, well, your dream is coming true, Laurie. Look at that. Um, and these are great for us being able to test the tiles and things as well, you see. It's all in the plan. I've got to locate a bloody IMU. This is a nightmare at the moment because th this one I can't use. So that, that chip will change, but it will be connected over either SPI or um, more probably I squared C. Yeah, it can make a cleaner, much more robust uh, robot. That's exactly the point. Yes, that, that's what these, the idea of having a tiling system uh, does. Because all of these screw in, of course. So they're mechanically much more stable. Which is cool. It's just a more integrated solution. Uh, the having the um, SD card on here might be useful as well, particularly if we start using the SD card pins in the FPGA. And if we go quad SPI, we'd need to do that. But this can connect directly to the ESP32, for example. So we've got that. I mean, the SD card stuff is a lot less important. In the robotic stuff but it might be useful to have the option um, and I've also got some uh, flash and uh, quad SPI RAM do you need that obviously for the circuit Python because it has to run the network stack and everything Right, that's that. Um, right, let's just go back to, let's just say that, go back to that motor board. Um, Yeah. So we'd need effectively hmm, I don't know how big these are gonna be. I'm just gonna see what these look like. If we were to add in some terminals. What do we need? We need six for each motor. We need twelve. Twelve is twelve gonna fit? Um do two lots of six. Mm. Two. I don't think these are going to fit. We think we're a bit stuck on size here. Oh. Yes, so for the full 12, I mean, the what we could do um, something that's repeated between the two is the power for the whole devices. So rather than using four of those, we could use two, but that would mean you putting two wires in each terminal.
Oh, you lost me again. I do apologize. It's a bit up and down. Um, so yeah, if if we did 12, that's probably not going to work. So let's talk. Let's look at doing. Uh, let's do 10. I think 10 would fit. Yeah, 10 definitely fits. So yeah, we could use um, 10 screw connectors. They'd obviously be the other way around because they'd be on the top rather than bottom. So those would fit in, you know, to where the motors are now. And the two center ones would be the power the hall effect round and plus or minus three volt that would be common so you'd have two wires going to each one of those um laurie makes a good point uh, another thing that i found essential on my mobile robot was a physical switch for the motor power for when you lose control of it and the motors are still running um yeah so a cut off the powertrain um that's a good point i need to have a look something that's the right size for that let me just save this let me just put a note back onto the um See, where do you put that switch? Do you put it on top of the super tile, perhaps? I'm going to put it on the super tile for now. I mean, it could go on the carrier if it was a toggle pin on the side, but then you you stand a chance of um, accidentally switching it off. Black tile. Let's just put it on here for a moment. Let's just add a switch so I don't forget. Do a kind of toggle switch, maybe. I'm just going to put this on for now. I mean, it doesn't make sense really, but because it's the wrong type of switch, but it will remind me have that in that's a vertical toggle switch by the way
anyhow quickly back to here so we could put the terminal blocks on like that and the plus and minus the ground and free volt free would be shared to the two motors I think that would be okay it's only low voltage um, mechanically that's not always the best idea to do if you put two wires into a um, screw terminal the fixing or the connection isn't always as good because it can bear down on one and not the other and stuff you have to be a bit careful when you do the screw up to make sure that it's grasped both of the conductors so not only is the conduction but but the wires don't slip out because otherwise it can rest on top of one but not the other the other thing you can do of course is solder them together however then you might have issues with cracking but this sort of application is probably okay it's hardly military but it does need to be robust so I'll leave those terminals there on that that will remind me to I mean I could change that just think how does that line up one two three four five six do you think terminals are the right thing I used to have a lot of these they're quite difficult to get in the right colors I've got some green ones but you can get them in all sorts of different colors now but not necessarily the um, smaller ones hold on Send a quick look 3.5 mil. These are really wide. Seem to be a few choices. Um, Let's check dimensions again. These are the simple type. So that what else was I working on that was of interest here we needed to cover just check. Got the stepper ones, I mentioned those before we covered those. Um, the network tile we might need to revisit because we don't need the um, <laughs> Wi Fi on that now. If we put the Wi-Fi on the super tile, we don't need um, we don't need the Wi-Fi module on the network one. Not that's anything to do with the um, robotic stuff. You should probably you don't exactly need um, networking on that. Although it's possible to use it as an interconnect kind of PoE interconnect in a larger robot. I've got some ideas for doing that actually. 
um, but that would involve putting more than one um, RJ45 jack on each tile. Um, I'd be looking at putting, you know, two on each tile and being able to do something equivalent to um, maybe ether cap. I probably wouldn't do ether cat itself because that's uh, quite an expensive way to go. But you can do something similar if you've got an FPGA. So what you can do is you could have uh, two Ethernet phi's potentially. Or you can get a double phi. By using a slightly different chip set, and then you can have multiple tiles with these on, and these can then be point to point kind of Ethernets for controlling, you know, with PoE on the board. So rather than just adding the Ethernet on the board, you're actually putting a PoE uh, power converter on each tile as well. So you can then drive a number of power over Ethernet devices. So you've got the communications and power as well. That reminds me, what I did see, I, did, I forgot to mention this on the news, USB-C, I think, goes up to like 100 watt. I saw an announcement that they're going to take that to 240 watt. There's a new version of USB-C coming down that supports up to a quarter of a kilowatt, basically. I'm not quite sure how they're getting the power over there, whether they're doubling the voltage from... 20 to 40 or maybe going up to 48 or something but keeping the current the same I'm not sure how they'd increase the current you know given the um, physical dimensions of the um, pins on the connectors but as well as thinking about the conduit itself they'd probably have to up the voltage I haven't read about it I just saw the announcement I haven't seen the detail my guess is they probably enable you to go higher voltage. But yeah, you know, quarter of a kilowatt down a USB cable. It's astounding. But they're talking about being able to drive um, and power 4K televisions over USB-C. That's actually, you could drive a reasonable motor at quarter kilowatt. <laughs> Which is another thing that I've been thinking about for a while. But I was thinking about using slightly smaller, i.e. 100 watt or less motors. So if you can do a 240 watt version of it, that would be great. Um, so that's on my to-do list for later. And particularly if you can do a quarter of a um, kilowatt, it would be a great interconnect internally. Um, right, so that's that. Uh, was there any other tiles that I needed to cover here? don't think so. I think uh, you've seen all the other ones that I'm working on. Let's have a quick look at how we're getting on with the Black Edge version of of the board as well. Crikey, where have I put that? Not on my list anymore. I lost all my recent documents list. It's really annoying. I managed to crash my machine for the first time in ages. Uh, damn it, I can't remember where I put the thing. Hmm, so annoying. As you can see, it's still in pieces. Um, 
changes on here that I'm incorporating. Um, there's a little, potentially a little daughter board here. Let me move this stuff out of the way. Might, yeah, so, God, there's so much stuff here. So if you look at this board here, this is where either a JTAG adapter can go and or Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi. Actually on the um, Black Edge version of um, ESP5. Uh, I've also got the battery holder to remind me. That's going to go on the bottom. But it's not going to be that big. I think it'll be slightly smaller. Um, it's only that those are the only real changes on the, the position of the USB um, to high speed has changed slightly. But apart from that, it looks very similar. I'm I'm nearly happy with it. Um, yeah, so having this daughter board here means that I can have a board on here that either just does JTAG, you know, with USB for debugging, or it can be a Bluetooth with JTAG, or it can be Wi Fi with JTAG, or maybe even Wi Fi and Bluetooth um, potentially. Which was why I was interested in if you'd ever used the um, ULX3 JTAG stuff. Because I think what they did was they ran a JTAG on the Wi Fi, on the ESP32 core, and then they could talk to it. So they had open OCD talk over Wi Fi to it, which was kind of a cool way of doing it. So that's a possibility. So in that case, I wouldn't use um, the S2 necessarily, although it'd still be an option. Um, you could actually use just the regular ESP32. But I kind of like having the um, circuit Python on there because it means you can also script it. Plus, you get when you plug it in on the USB, you can um, <coughs> get access to the files and drag and drop your files on there, which is kind of nice. And it's great for testing as well, by the way. Really good for testing, and writing test scripts and stuff. And I'll cover that on another uh, issue. You need to look into that, but. What we'll probably do is, if I get the um, super tire working for the uh, ice core and the tile carrier, we can actually do some of that. Although not all, because that doesn't have JTAG and stuff. Although I was looking into the possibility. Yeah, let's go back to that actually. I've got to remember. I need to put a note on this. On the um, Super tile here. One of the other options I was just playing around with the connectivity on here. Let me switch to the schematic. Hello guys and girls and folks and focuses. Um, so this is what the super tile connector looks like. And you can see we're only using some of the ones that were available in the ice storm. There's a whole bunch of others like the low power ones available on the ECP5 as well. Um, <coughs> what I haven't got on here is I mean, what I could do possibly 
And I wonder if I can use the ESPS2 program, the STM32, by using the lines that are shared with the SWD pins, the interrupt and enable, although I was trying to separate those out. That's something I need to decide. I don't know how important that is for people, but it might be a nice feature to have because that means you could remotely debug the STM32, possibly. Oh, my frame rate's going up and down like a yo yo on here. I don't know what's going on with the network. I think it's my end, Laurie. You know, I don't think it's necessarily your end. I think I've got some issues here. It's green for a, a, ages and then it suddenly drops down and then comes back up. And it kind of goes amber and then red. I'm out of juice. Right, quick comfort break. I need to get a refreshment. Bear with me. Let me switch this. I think it must have dehydrated me this. I've drunk loads of water this evening. That jab. Uh, Laurie says, this is the ULX free S microphone from COVID program in the FPGA or Flash. Seems to have options for JTAG or SPI. Give me a link. But as I said, I haven't used that for debugging. Just switched to my feed lead tab and now saw this. Uh, that's the announcement about USB-C, yeah. So what does it, does it talk about what changes? Um, soon the majority of portable PCs, hold on, let me put it up so people can see. Um, Soon the majority of portable PCs won't need to be equipped with an ugly barrel jack and a proprietary power brick. Well, that was always the idea, wasn't it? I think they've already done that. You had USB for laptops for ages. Uh, more than doubling the amount of power you can send over USB-C cable to 240 watts. Proves the USB-C power delivery spec tops out 100 watts. And it's definitely held industry back. Oh, so we're saying, for example, my own Dell XPS 15 can technically charge over USB-C. It actually needs 130 watts. Yeah, if you've got a high-powered laptop, you, you may have been 
out of luck with the old standard. Oh look, here it goes. A cable will need to support up to 5 amps and 50 volt to be compliant. How cool is that? I mean, you probably want to stick to like 48 volts really rather than 50 volts, but there you go. So yeah. Then, oh yeah, the appendix says, this append you know, I'm just thinking, does that actually get classified as high voltage now? I think if it's sub 50, in the UK, if it's sub 50, it's low voltage. If it's 50 and above, it's high voltage. I think that's why they chose 48. This appendix considers the impact of having higher voltages across the USB type C interface. It addresses contact lifetime and the product safety when USB type C cable gets unplugged while higher voltage operation is still enabled and you get discharges so you've got inductances in the power supply which you normally have in capacitors as well um, it's applicable for USB power delivery to find extended power range in PR voltage is 28 to 48 volts Standard power range SPR at 20 volts and supply in the current is high. Potential for arcing damage during cable withdrawal. Arcing can occur when the connector is unplugged. If the voltage differential across the gap between the plug and receptor for the V bus connector is greater than 12 volts. Yeah. Um, I remember years ago when I worked at the company who made. Um, made medical equipment uh including things like thermal recyclers and they're quite juicy but um we had a massive problem with um connections breaking down very heavy duty connections in fact breaking down you know after many years of usage because of arcing um, one of the things they had to do in manufacturing in order to reduce this was they had they injected a special conductive grease into the connectors that prevents them the arcing but even that after a period of time dries out and that actually goes powdery in the end so after an elongated period of time even that doesn't protect you from arcing. Anti-arcing is a real problem. You know, if you've got connectors that are being made and break, you know, regularly. Just look at relay complex. You, you see the same sort of thing. Um, mm, interesting. Interesting. Quarter of a kilowatt down a USB cable. Yeah, I'm up for that. That will work with what I wanted to do with the USB C as a distribution mechanism. Because then it's actually better than PoE. It's actually it's lower cost for a start. I mean it's point to point, obviously. But yeah, I wanted to do that for a long time. But being able to go from 100 watt to 240 is a real um, that enables you to drive a lot more different things. That's kind of cool. I mean, I will do some tiles with that, and you'll you'll see what I mean. And we could do a really cool super tile with that for these V5. Thanks for that link, um, Laurie. Yes. So it does um, does up the voltage as I thought it might in order to get the power. Okay, back to the CAD briefly. Is there anything else you wanted to ask about, or is there anything that I'm missing on these tiles and super tiles and stuff, Laurie? 
because I'm probably going to end this uh, stream very shortly anyhow. So I'm rather tired today. That jab's taken it out of me. Or the side effect. I haven't really had any side effects apart from well, a bit of sore arm and some tiredness. Is there anything I'm not thinking of? I ask you this every time, Nori. I think I've got enough for us to go ahead and start making some of this stuff. I'll start ordering some PCBs. There's some components I've got to order as well. I've got to order some motor drivers. I've got enough things. I've got I've got enough. Uh, certainly for prototypes, I've got things like the FPC connectors for the cameras. Uh, I've got the tile main connector that says 1.27 pitch. I've ordered a bunch of stuff from Ali as well uh, to help. I've got the stuff to do the ESP32s and the Wi-Fi. Um, I've got some USB sockets, some C's. I've got the flash. I've got the Quad SPI RAMs. I've got some of the diode stuff. I've got some of the RGB LEDs. I've got one. I might only have one or two of the battery connectors. I might need to order some more of those. I need to order some terminal connectors for the um, motor drivers. Oh, the other thing that I really need to spend some time on is working out what IMU to use and whether I can actually get hold of any IMUs right now. Um, that might be tricky. Uh, I was looking at those before and had the ones that I wanted to use I couldn't use because they just weren't available or some of them have actually gone out of production now, ones I've used before. Um, in terms of the IMU connection, I'm thinking that should be connected to I squared C and should be programmed from the microcontroller rather than the FPGA because programming that stuff is actually quite painful um, and that's a good thing to use libraries for. In fact, on the SuperTile, I could actually connect it to the ESP S2 if we wanted. Because you have to do things like calibrate it and all sorts of stuff, I seem to remember. It's a long time since I played with one. No, he says it must cost you quite a bit to get all of that before you start selling anything. Oh, yeah, well, quite a bit. Yeah, but I mean, getting all the stuff for the ECP5 is the most expensive thing. Buying things like the FPGAs, those are super expensive. And all the uh, STMs and everything else, yeah. But it's worth it. Everything, you know, requires investment if you want to do something. I don't need to spend much more now. The bulk of the money's already been spent, frankly. Um, I can't think of anything else that we're missing. I need to think about the power switch and how we do that. I can look into that. That's a good point, that one. Thank you for that, Laurie. I've got the crystals as well for the ESP32, which reminds me I need to get some crystals for the STM32. So hope I can get hold of those. Um, oh, I can hear a meow of that. I am meow. You're hungry again. <coughs> um. Oh, yes, there was one other thing I wanted to show you before I go. Laurie agrees it could be programmed from either the STM32 or soft core or the ESPS2. 
easy than doing it from the FPGA, it's too much code required for that. There is something else, so let me just remind you again. One of the other things that we can do, let me just show you again. This old garlic is somewhere cooking. Um, so again, remember I said this is a super tile area. One of the options I thought might be a good idea to have is an adapter. Oh, yeah, I've got a couple of things to show you. Don't let me forget Edinburgh. I'll show you in a sec. This is an obvious one. Um, get rid of brown if that's in here. This is a super tile to um, mix mod. A slight compromise. I call it mix mod version two because it only has three AECs and it has I squared C replacing two of the ADCs. I'm kind of cheating really. Let me switch to the um so yeah. This doesn't even have to be a full size board. So what it could be is a really small board. And then the connector can be upside down, so it sits there, and then P mods will fit into into it here, not off the end of the carrier, but actually on the carrier itself. So you could fix, you know, a double P or quad P mod, whatever you call it, or a mix mod. Twinkles, want to say hello? Hmm. You've been finishing your suppers. You? Say hello to folks. You don't want it to do you. you want to go. I'll open the door for you. Being the cat butler. So yeah, having a little um Mixed mod adapter. It's slightly compromised because it doesn't have all the ADCs. And it has three ADCs rather than the five. And then I use it I squared C pins where the other two ADCs were. So that just fits on the slot and has a socket pointing out and you can actually sit, you know, a P mod like So you could put one of these in, for example, or you could put the tester in, or you could do a VGA or, you know, or like one of these VGA PS2 ones that would fit in. I just figured it would be a useful option. For prototyping, really, and testing. I nearly forgot about that. So I'm, I'm going to design one of those as well. It's very easy to do. Although I've just noticed that goes a long way, that signal. What's that? That's power. Um, there. So it wouldn't even need to go to the end. Hold on.
Ah, right. So the actual size, because I've got the tile template there, would only it only need to be this long. It wouldn't need to go fully to the end. And then the P mods can sit in here, plug in, because this would be like a right angle connector. Um, let me see if I can illustrate that. I don't think you can ever find this one thing on it. Connectors. So yeah, you'd have something like this. So here's your P mod coming in. It plugs in, you know, to the right angled socket like that. So there's your PMO board, you know, slotting in. And it fits nicely because you've got 50 mil here, top to bottom. And if you look at the size of the, a lot of the PMODs, then they will easily fit in that size. You know, these double PMODs. Because they're just, you know, they're, they're like 45 or 46 mill or something like that so I can use them for LEDs and seven segments etc using existing P mods yes but you can't use a super tile and the P mods at the same time so this is a secondary feature it's not a primary feature it's just for when you're Wanting to use stuff that you've already got to test something out, maybe that you don't yet have a tile for or something. Yeah, a, a mix, a super tile is a single entity. So yeah, if if you are using the super tile slot to put the mix mod adapter on, you wouldn't be able to add your, um, you know. Your normal super tile it's just there really for backwards compatibility to make sure to enable you to use stuff that you may already have on p mods <laughs> i mean mechanically it doesn't make much sense when you're deploying something in a robot anyhow because it's you know not very mechanically sound um Sorry, Laurie saying I missed his earlier comment saying that the robot will have free spare tiles. That's right, because I've integrated quite a bit onto the super tile. Some of the things that you wanted and that I, I needed for the stuff I'm working on. Yeah, you've got um, 
We've got quite a bit of room for expansion. So what you're saying? So a single tile P mod would be useful. What well, what would you put on it? Don't forget, uh, a tile only has eight digital I/O plus SPI, I squared C, and three mix signals. So you can't do a mix mod, for example. You can't have a tile to mix mod. You could do a tile to a, you know, a single P mod like a. I don't know, what, what do you have on single P mods? Oh, so Laurie says that might actually be used for a single P mod tile. Well, it's easy enough to do an adapter. Let's have a look, shall we? Oh wow, started doing this again. Oh, come on, what is that? Oh. Why is it not finding my libraries? Use library add. It is working now, good. So um, let me need to have a single keyboard connector. Mm -hmm. Email. We just save this, hold on. P mod tile. There'd be a bit of wastage as well because you're not using all of the um, connectivity on the tile. Uh,
Just change the size in here. So you can do something like that. <clears throat> and then you know your P mod device would um, you could do the same trick we're doing on the super tile mix mod adapter whereby you make it shorter um, edit add So you have a P mod plugs in to so this only need be kind of this wide. And that will plug in. You haven't got much room the P mod length, it's gonna stick out a little on a tile depending what size your P mod is that kind of thing or you could have this move right up to the edge so it would be off the off the uh, carrier entirely. A lot of P mods would then foot fit in the footprint of the tile. Well, don't forget you've only got 37 mil from this end to that end. That's your tile space. So if you've got a really short, stubby P mod maybe or are you talking about having them sticking up in the air so you can only fit one in here so it depends how long it is as to how far it would stick out right given that's the dimension of the um, actual tile <sighs> oh, I've missed a comment uh, right, let me just recap. So a single tile P mod will be useful, yeah. LEDs or seven segments. These useful for diagnostics. Having the P mod connector at 90 degrees might be useful. I did mention that before. But do you mean 90 degrees as in vertical? Or horizontal. Because if it's vertical, it's going to stick up awfully. It's going to be somewhat unstable. Yes, you could have multiple ones, but mechanically, that's not very. Um, yeah, well, as I'm showing you here on this diagram. Um, Laurie, you've got to remember that you've only got 37 mil across, 37 millimeters. That is the width of a tile. I don't have any single PMOD tiles here to show you, but they can be a bit longer. So, for example, I don't think I've got any single P mods left in here.
think they're all stashed away somewhere. I had some but I've got them I think I've stored them somewhere else can't you put can't you fit a P mod connector at the bottom edge at 90 degrees At the bottom edge of what? At the bottom edge of a tile, Laurie, or? Here's an example of one of the P mods that we made that we used to um, provide with the uh, Black Ice 2 before we did mix mods. So this was the Proto P mod. But that was, you know, about 46 mil long. Which P mods are you thinking of? Sorry. So in other words, this bit here would be, you know, from here to 46 over here. 35 by 22, hold on. So 24 at 35 would be um, 59, right? Right? 24 and 30 is 54 at 5 is 59. So that's uh, 35 long. I'm um, not sure the exact height, it's probably about 20. Hold on. Uh, that's 40 minus 12. Something like that, Laurie. Rotate it 90 degrees. Um, 
That's going to be tricky. You mean like that? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Um, in which case, it would have to be on top of the tile for the simple reason it may be longer than that. So yeah, that's probably possible. I don't know if you need that a bit more actually. That kind of thing. Something like that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's possible to do that, sorry. But it would have to sit on top of the tile, obviously, so it would be above it. And you probably couldn't have longer P-mods because they then interfere with the other tile, unless it happened to be a corner tile on a certain side then it could stick out a bit if you wanted you could rearrange them well that's easy enough to do I've started it now I'll save this so I can wire that they're really easy to wire <clears throat> no problem that's easy enough to do Laurie your wish is my command. We can do that. You see, if I tried to use one of these protos, that would stick out because this is like another 10 mil out. But yeah. But we won't be using protos anyhow. Because we're going to have a proto tile, which reminds me, I haven't designed the proto tile yet. I need to add that on to my list. Cool. Okay, good session. Got some useful bits out of that. Uh, anything else you can think of, Laurie? Oh, in other news, my phone is totally fucked broke yesterday just really suddenly so now I can't read what's on the display but um, there's something really weird when it comes on it just flashes and then goes really dim and flickers and you can't actually read anything on it and I was um, trying to upgrade it online to order a new phone which I've needed to do for ages anyhow because this is a bit old and fucked um, and of course, when I logged in and I went to the upgrade options, it said, oh, I must, you must enter the pin and it sends you a pin on your phone. <laughs> I'm like, I can't read the display on my phone to get the pin. <clears throat> but what I did was, um, if you look really carefully, you can actually see something on there. It's just very dim. So you can capture it. And particularly it flashes um very quickly and it's a bit brighter so if you record a video of it which is what i did by holding up to the webcam i could then go back into the webcam and i could look at it frame by frame and enhance it and read the pin code which i then entered in the browser it took me three attempts to do it because it kept timing out in the um on the online store for upgrading anyhow i'll get my new phone tomorrow <coughs> the irony is I'm not that big into phones um, or spending lots of money on them anymore. So 
I pay very little a month at the moment because this phone is so old. I wanted to see how long I could go without replacing a phone. And it was fine. The battery even still works. It's normally the battery that buggers up more than anything. But I didn't expect the screen and stuff to go like that. But I thought, oh, i just go for the cheapest option type thing. So I'm actually paying the same. I'm not paying any more money, but I'm getting the new phone. And I'm still paying the um, rather low tariff. Because I looked at my average data usage and stuff, and that was very low, etc. So, yeah. Hopefully that will come tomorrow, and I'll be able to use my damn phone again. So that was a bit of a nightmare. Um, right, so are we done on this? I will keep this and I will wire that. It's going to be very easy to do. What I could probably do on this um, this P mod adapter is um, P mod tile. I've put an O in there. Look, uh, is the connections that we don't use. So we've got what have we got in there? We've got three mix signals and there's an SPI as well with um, of a chip select so I can put those on headers and we can use them for anything um, but 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 on the motor tile we are using the FPGA pins obviously but we're not using the SPI and we're not using the mixed signal pins is there anything you can think that would go on the motor tile that needs SPI or I squared C or free mix signals. Is there anything you can think of, Laurie, that's worth adding onto the motor tile? Or do I just pin them out to headers? What's your thoughts? Oh, I'm getting through all my sweeties. I'm going to have to buy some more of these. Very Moorish. Can you think of anything else? Oh, do you hear what I said? I was saying, so on the motor tile, we use all the FPGA pins, but we've got SDA, I squared C, sorry, SPI, with a chip select, and we've got three mixed signal pins. Is there anything you can think of that will go on the motor tile that uses those pins that would be useful to have on the motor tile? Any ideas? Maybe have a think. An IMU if you don't have it on a super tile. Yeah, I kind of would prefer to have that on a super tile. Main reason is you only ever need one IMU, whereas you may need more than one motor tile. Maybe if you wanted a quad drive, four wheel drive. Then you'd have two tiles. You wouldn't want two IMUs, so I probably prefer to put that on the super tile because you know there's only ever going to be one of them. I mean, if we can't think of anything, I could just pin them out on some headers or something. Don't know, you didn't have to populate those, just have the have the through holes there so that people could solder them in if they need them. You know, use the old DuPont connectors for something, I guess. Have I covered all the. Um, I think I'm pretty much there, by the way. I've got the story straight in my head, how we do, you know, black tile, carrier, 
how it works with the ice core and how that then also that same board works with the ECP5 black edge board as well. You can always include a shitty add on I2C connector icon badges. Do you mean a quick connector? One of those. Or something like that. We can use those JST one mil spaced things. No, it's called a shitty add on. That's what it's actually called, is it? Why have I never heard of this? I'm going to look it up now. I can't believe it's called a shitty add on. It's funny. Hold on. <laughs> is this Hacker Day? Or some such? Introducing Shitty Add-on version 1. Yeah, Hacker Day. <laughs> oh boy. How did I not hear of this? <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. So it's just a 4-pin connector. What? what? What are they using? Yeah, it's just a 0.1. Mm. Shit, yeah. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that worries me is um, the I squared C is overloading it because that's fine. But yeah, whatever. Oh, it's got a new pin out. Look, this looks really sophisticated. That's more than four pins. So that's I squared C and two GPIOs. But we actually have three. Our pins can be mixed signal. So yeah, when in doubt, add the shitty add on pin. Or female receptacle badge is that female bottom view SAO shitty add on so it's a female that goes on the um, on the tile shitty add on version 1.1 shitty add on version 1.696 Attacking piss. Was this in April the first thing? What's the date on this? 20th of the 3rd. Not quite. <laughs> they could have saved that for April Fools. <laughs> Thanks, Fat Laurie. I can't believe I've never seen this. I've clearly not been paying attention. <laughs> oh, mind you, this was 2019. It's quite a while ago. <laughs> it's all very funny. Yes, we can add the shitty add-on connector, if nothing else. Right, I think I'm going to call it an evening. Um, I'm probably going to chillax and try not to fall asleep on the sofa. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be back to normal. Right, well, thank you, particularly Laurie. Um, and let's catch up on it's probably going to be next Wednesday unless there's anything I think of for Friday probably not this weekend's going to be busy it's bank holiday isn't it I'm going to go to Nottingham as well see um, folks in law who we haven't seen for a while so I'll probably go up some point in the weekend and with the kids and family and then come back hopefully in time for a stream next Wednesday but let's see I should be back for the stream but anyhow thank you for your company and participation um, and I will speak to you next week I am of course down at the forum or on discord um, along with 
Laurie and everyone else. So speak to you then. Thank you guys and girls, folks. Ciao.